Welcome back to Holistic Healing. In this episode we'll be discussing coffee and kidneys. Let us now discuss coffee and kidney illness. What is the connection? Is coffee good for that? To further understand this question, we must first grasp the concept of coffee. Coffee has one of the greatest consumption rates of any beverage, which is remarkable. Every year, almost 500 billion cups are consumed. It also contains approximately 1,000 components. It has numerous properties. It functions as an antioxidant. It is anti-inflammatory in nature. It protects against cancer and blood coagulation. It also has antifibrotic qualities, which aid in the prevention of scarring within the body. There are numerous elements that contribute to this. These are fancy names, but alkaloids, diterpenes, chlorogenic acid, and melanoidins are all components in coffee that may be responsible for all these wonderful effects that coffee has. That is not to argue that coffee is without adverse effects. There are certain well-known adverse effects. Caffeine can interfere with sleep, and we all know how essential sleep is. However, it is normally safe to have two to three cups of coffee every day. What about kidney disease, though? What we discover is fascinating. According to study, one in every seven persons in the United States alone has renal disease, not to mention kidney disease as the 12th largest cause of mortality, which I believe not many people are aware of. It is sad that renal disease does not receive the same level of attention as other disorders. In fact, kidney illness kills more people each year than breast or prostate cancer. So, let us discuss the relationship between coffee and renal illness. A fresh meta-analysis has been published. One of the reasons this study is fascinating is because it is one of the largest studies on coffee and renal illness to date. Second, they attempted to quantify the risk of coffee with kidney disease by determining how many cups of coffee should be consumed each day to achieve the most benefit or harm with renal disease. This study was done with almost 500,000 people, about half the population of Montana, in them, and they tracked them for 6 to 24 years so there's plenty of time for follow-up. Okay, fine, what did they discover? First, let's talk about renal disease incidents, or how likely you are to get kidney disease. People who drank one cup or less of coffee per day had a 13% lower chance of developing renal disease. Then, for those who drank two or more glasses, the benefit was significantly greater. They had an 18% lower risk of developing renal disease. So, again, one cup or two or more cups, and it appears that the benefit was with two or more cups. What about the possibility of end-stage kidney disease, which would necessitate dialysis? Did the coffee drinkers also have an advantage over those who didn't? Those who drank coffee had an 18% lower risk than those who did not. Although there was a difference whether they drank one cup, two cups, or three cups. The bottom message was that if you drank coffee, you were less likely to need dialysis. When it comes to kidney disease, it's important to know how much protein is in your urine. Albuminoria is a fancy way of explaining that as the pressure on the kidney increases, the barrier on the kidney breaks and protein begins to leak into the urine. So, what happens if you have albuminoria? It's one of the best predictors of how quickly your kidneys may deteriorate. So, the more protein you spill in your urine, the faster your kidneys will degrade. As a result, the individuals who consumed any amount of coffee had a 19% lower risk of acquiring albumin region. How about the possibility of dying from chronic renal disease? Individuals that drank any amount of coffee reduced their risk by 28%. So, what is the bottom line? First and foremost, this is a large MET study, and it's a solid one because it was done with measuring the large quantity of population, as well as a lot of follow-up data. Yet it demonstrates that, in general, coffee is safe for people with chronic renal disease. It is no longer discussing topics like potassium and caffeine and their effects. Another noteworthy aspect of this study is that it ties coffee to lower kidney disease incidence or risk of developing kidney disease, lower risk of death, lower risk of protein and lower chance of requiring dialysis. The final finding of this study is that the ideal amount of coffee to consume each day is 2 to 3 cups. That is based not only on this analysis, but also on numerous other studies. 
What's remarkable about the other findings is that folks who drink decaf had the same benefits as those who drink caffeinated if they can't tolerate caffeine. Before we get too enthusiastic about the study, keep in mind that this is population research. That is, it is merely informing you that there is a connection. It also states that they did not look at any randomized control studies. They were researching population studies. Remember that randomized controlled trials are the gold standard. There is always the possibility of some confusing variables. Maybe everyone who drank coffee was well, while everyone who didn't drink coffee was sick. That's why individuals who didn't consume coffee deteriorated faster. But the important line is that this is more evidence that coffee may be part of a healthy lifestyle if used in moderation, which seems to be about two to three cups per day, caffeinated or non-caffeinated. Thanks so much for watching. Remember that your comments, likes, and shares help to build a holistic community and facilitate the exchange of useful information. Your quest to better health is both inspiring and illuminating. Anything is possible. Never lose hope and continue striving for a healthier, happier you. Till next time, take care.